Hey guys, welcome to the Max. As you can see, we're in the sheep forest. So when we talk about this video, the name of this video is called Adding to Your Land Without Paying For It. So what does that actually mean? So let's let's start this video right now. So many times we have land that it's just really unusable. Can't pose this right here. So this area is nice. It's nice privacy and we want to keep somewhat of privacy, but how can we utilize this land better? So, so let me show you what we're planning on doing. Bam, look at it now. So what we've done is we're saying, okay, we need to add more value to our land for our farm. Not that we don't love hedges and privacy, but guess what? Now we can add a whole nother rotation of pigs and sheep, maybe even cows one day, right here where it's not nearly as bad looking now as what it was. So I'm gonna show you where we're at and what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. This is that real thick lush spot that was right behind the bees where we said we were gonna move the lambs and pigs in to work the area. Well, we are, but it was a little too thick for us to get lines through there and try to get the animals through there to start working so what we did we come in we got it mulched and got it clean with some tractors it looks great we do have some old kind of pile of junk kind of through here we're going to dig a hole and put it in but you see the bees are through here you see the pond what this is going to do now is double as another pig forest and then ultimately some more sheep land too between all these beautiful trees so we've now added more value to this property by opening up this three or four acres here that now we can run more pig on and not just have, it's just buffer zone. Now we believe in privacy. So you see, we still have that line of trees there right on our property line to where me and the next neighbor don't see each other. And that's the for the best. Uh, but right here in the middle, we had this random privacy kind of help blocking our house, but really blocking the pond. But now, because the way we grow, because we have exterior perimeter fencing, it's time to utilize this land. So we are now adding value, adding land for no additional cost and purchasing land. So now we're gonna add value by adding more pork and more lamb right in the midst of all of this going on. The cows will maybe one day graze in here, especially when the trees come down as they get older. But more than anything, it gives shade for the pigs. It also gives um, a better quality forest for the lambs too. And they'll both eat under these trees like they did all over there where they're at now. So it allows us to rotate more animals and have more lands. And sometimes to keep them off some of these big green pastures when it's really hot summer. That might be more utilized for the cows. This may be more utilized for the pigs and sheep and that will help them eat the stuff that sometimes cows don't eat, but then give cattle more land too. So there's a lot of benefits by doing this kind of management to our property. And, and plus it gives a kind of a, a pretty look through the forest. You see the pond, we're still like got a little bit more clean. This is a big old tree, butt. this is that pile of stuff that we're fixing to dig a big old monster hole for and bury it but it allows us again to have this three acres on this side not only that we have a whole nother little acre kind of back in here that we may can start thinning out and working towards and doing the exact same thing of what we're doing now but that brings me to a point do we need this size land to operate land management for animals i'm glad you asked that for cattle yes you need a lot of land because they're big animals for sheep you need a lot of grasslands and a lot of lands they can eat some of this hedge and stuff off of. <laughs> but for pigs, if you're planning on raising pigs, you can literally raise pigs and chickens in this area. I mean, this is this little spot right here of this two or three acres is only about one fourth, one fifth acre. You can take this area and you can utilize that and that will be all you need to truly sufficiently grow forest raised pigs to raise a poultry to kind of fertilize the area. If you're trying to grow something underneath like wild, you know, if you're trying to grow wildflowers underneath these pines or grass, because grass will grow 
especially since they're kind of thinned out. That will allow you to utilize it for sheep one day. Now, this area here, what can a pig eat in that? They can eat the acorns, they can eat the random leaves that fall, the branches, they can eat the grub that's underneath this tree patch. So there's a lot of good natural forage for animals when you talk about opening this up. Enough about all that. Let's get this pile cleaned up and uh, make the, the side even open and more pretty. All right, two or three acres. I'm not sure, I, I don't, I'm not surveying this land out by no means, but this is probably two or three acres we'll be able to open up to the sheep, to the pig, even to the chicken. You help? Well, you see, we took the shocker knot down. We're taking this field down, or this pin down, excuse me, that we had some of the Freedom Rangers in. Now, in the back of the other area, back barn, where we had some chickens, now we have two broody mamas. We have some new ducklings and new chickens, new permaculture chickens that's gonna be out in the field. Um, but they're gonna start in nets right here. So we take one set of chickens down and net, and now we're turning around putting another one back up. So it's amazing how it's like us taking Petey and all of a sudden we have Uno and Balor coming right behind them as more steer. It's all regenerative guys, all regenerative. You ready? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. See it going? Uh, do you fix, do you fix it? I did. Wow. So I put oil right there and right there and it started going. So that's how you'll wind your bobbin right there on this side. This is about to bring back a whole lot of memories for you guys. So Harley was gifted this Singer sewing machine from her great grandmother when she passed away a few years ago. And it has sat in their room for forever and we have not been able to do anything with it. So this summer, I told Harley we were gonna take this out, we were gonna work on it, and get it back going. Well, she and I come in here a few days ago, we learned how to thread it, um, and it worked, but it was going ear, 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 wasn't it, Harley? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we've gotta take this thing apart, we've gotta clean it, and we needed some machine oil. So I ordered some of that from Amazon. I've got it going without squeaking. And the bobbin was also not going, which is what we just showed y'all. Which is now spinning, if you can see that, that's still spinning. And this is actually, I just saw the date, date on it. 1957, I believe it's the model 201 machine. Harley's grandmother, great grandmother, did not love to sew so it has not been used in years and years and years and years and so works. we pulled this thing out and we took it apart y'all can see i've been kind of cleaning it up over here i've used some stuff to kind of clean it up and we oiled it we've got all of this old we got some stuff down here in the bottom old we oiled some stuff up down here um, we've got the bobbin back going, like we said, so we're pretty excited for us to get this put back together. She is absolutely beautiful. She had a lot of rust on her, and I've just kind of been trying to clean, just clean it up as much as I can. But it is a treasure to have, not only for memories and it being passed down, but this is just a wonderful machine all together. So we are so excited to have it and I cannot wait to get it back up and going and put Harley on it because Harley does know how to sew some. She actually learned on mine, but you practice some on your little one. Now you'll get to learn even more on Memo's machine. Mm -hmm. Show them what you found, what was in the drawers. There is ruffling, there, there's a bottom piece and it makes What is it that ruffling. bottom piece called? Your foot. Presser foot. Presser foot. Those are presser foot attachments. It makes, it makes it do a ruffle. So this one makes a ruffle. We've and got a straight one. one. Mm -hmm. There's some other ones that does other cool designs on there and stuff. That's cool. It's really neat. 
And we found some old stamps. Three cents. What year it was. Everything cleaned back up pretty well. Just put it right here. We're gonna start putting this back together. And so you can tell this needs some cleaning up. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. This will go here. And then we'll have to put the bobbin, the, the bottom part and the bobbin back together. And then we're going to get it back threaded and then we're gonna test it out. have it going this is a lot different than my sewing machine um everything from winding the bobbin my winding bobbin is on top to pulling up the thread in the bottom everything is is way different than mine threading it everything so i had to use the book <laughs> get it all done but i think we have it we are going to try it here and see uh, nope. Nope. I think the needle position might not be right. So, all right. I think we got it, y'all. I think I figured out what I did wrong. Like I said, this machine is so much different than what I'm used to a lot a big huge new learning experience but i want to show y'all how smoothly it's going let me try to yellow on pink but can you see that Woo! we did it i'm super excited about this thrilled not only is it colby's grandmother's machine so it's a piece of our family and honestly i was sitting here and as i was cleaning it and stuff earlier i was like you know, it almost feels like I should be sitting around talking to her still. We used to go see her after um, I would go to the gym. We would go sit and talk to her. And it just reminded me a lot of her because cleaning it brought that smell from her house back. And it just flooded my mind with those memories. And we would go over there and sit and talk to her. So kind of bittersweet. Um, it's sad, you know, that she's no longer here with us, but it's also um, sweet because it brought back so many of those memories that we used to have. And we've got her cleaned up. She's old and um, sewing beautifully. And it just took some time. I've been in here about two or three hours, just taking it apart, cleaning it oiling it getting it put back together very excited to have it done and going and this was something that harley and i wanted to do this summer was get my mom and get it cleaned up and get it going so we've done that and that's very exciting